importance of being around someone as they're dying can never be overstated. There are certain visions that happen. Okay. They can be very close to death and you can be talking with them and ask them what they see. Now, they might have enough consciousness to be able to speak but you can also put your hand either on, on their forehead or on their heart and you can talk with them mind to mind. What kind of vision do you see? Now, if they see a vision of fire, that is the symbol of the hell realms. If they see a vision of black beings, Sometimes they're hairy and you can't, it's like a Bigfoot, you know, completely, but all black. Sometimes it's black animals. Now, this is a vision that happens when you have greed in your mind. You can have a vision of animals, like going to the zoo or seeing animals in the forest. Let's step back. When you have a vision of fire, if you die at that moment, you will be reborn in the hell realm. If you have a vision of ogres or black animals of some kind dragging you off, you will be reborn as one of these kind of beings. You can have a vision of animals, and you will be reborn as an animal. That corresponds with delusion. You can have a vision of past relatives, seeing them that have already died, but now you see them. That means when you die at that time, you will be reborn a human being. Or you can see devas coming down in a chariot, and there's Devas in the chariot that will come and take you away. They're going to take you to the heavenly realms. But the last moment, if you haven't developed your mind very much, you will have the tendency to have your old habitual thinking arise. You remember that statement, what we think and ponder on, that's the inclination of our mind. Well, if we have a whole lifetime of thinking and pondering of something in the same way, if we haven't got enough energy and effort and clarity of mind, then it will revert back to your habitual tendency. So the last moment before death is very important. Now, I, a friend of mine in India wrote a small book on this. And he was called to someone that was dying. And he would chat for a little while, and then he would be quiet for a little while and say, are you seeing any visions? And they corresponded, just like I was talking about, with all these different mental states. And he'd have a thought about material things. Now, in India, when you die on a mattress, that mattress is supposed to be burnt. Or actually, it's Bangladesh. But this was a new mattress. And he wanted to be taken off of this mattress and put on another mattress so that this could be given to one of the family members. And then he started feeling like he was being pulled by his feet by these big monster black things. So the, the monk would start chanting again, and then that vision would go away. In America... This kind of thing is definitely not understood. And uh, the chanting, unless they understand what the chanting actually is, it can be helpful or not. When I spent time in a nursing home, my mother ran a nursing home, and I was there for almost a year. And I would go to my mother and I would say, do you see the signs of anybody that's going to die in the next few days. And she was great 
at being able to recognize all of these signs because there was about 50 people a year that died. So she would tell me, uh, this person is going gonna, is gonna to die in three or four days, so I would spend three or four days with them. I was reading from the Bible because I don't care anything to keep your mind uplifted. And then before they died, if the family wasn't there, I would have them take the five precepts in their mind. Quite often they were too weak to be able to do it verbally. So I told them just to take this precept right now. I'm not going to kill any living beings on purpose. I'm not going to steal anything. I'm not going to have any wrong sexual activity. Now, when you take the five precepts, that makes your mind incredibly uplifted and pure. And then what I would do would tell them to remember the times when they were happy and giving to other people. It didn't matter whether it's to their family. It doesn't matter. And I would see people die with these beautiful smiles on their face. It was great stuff. And it's real interesting. And, and I, I got to learn a lot being there a whole year. And at that time, I was starting to help set up hospice. And I was teaching people how to be with somebody when they were dying because everybody, when they start in hospice, they want to take the pain away. And it just doesn't work. So it was a real interesting period of time. Now, I was working at the hospital. I was making $100 take home. I was paying $50 a week room and board. One of the patients I thought would benefit a lot from getting acupuncture. So I got permission to take this person to an acupuncturist, but the family said, you can do that if you want, but we're not going to pay for it. And I said, I don't care. I'll pay for it. And that was $35 a week. I gave $10 to my mother. I gave $10 to a monastery. Add that up, you'll find out that it's more than $100 a week, and that's all I made. And I had a magic pocket. Anytime I needed money, it was in my pocket. And I knew that I didn't put any money there. You know, it was one of those kind of things. I was spending my time going from every place I went, I walked. So I was in great shape. And I spent my time with people that were getting close to death with hospice. I spent my time in the nursing home with people that were dying. And I was teaching meditation. And this is where I learned that when you take care of Dhamma, Dhamma takes care of you. People were giving me clothes. People were giving me new shoes. People were giving me rides wherever I wanted to go. I mean, it was amazing. And I didn't really care whether they did or not. That was the thing that was most amazing because Dhamma gives you what is necessary. Not necessarily what you want, but it'll give you what you need. And I learned a great lesson from that. And when I became a monk, I have no worries. And when Michael and I started out driving across country at the meditation center we had, I had we had ten dollars between us something like that and we went across the country and back again what me worry 